So at the end of the last tutorial, we got our character moving when we push the standard controls for moving left, moving right, up or down. Which all seems to work, but there's the next problem we encounter in building this is if we move left and go right past that. Same thing going right or going down. We very quickly leave the area that the camera can see. So the next step is probably going to Next logical step will be to have the camera follow our character around. So just like we did with the character, we're going to, if we select the main camera here, we can see the preview of what the camera can, the area the camera can see. And we can see that's just a small area of our screen. We want a character, the camera to move with our character. So once again, we'll adjust the transform to do so. Uh, the X and Y positions, and we'll probably want Z to stay at negative 10. So we'll do that here. We'll adjust it in a similar but different manner. And there are lots of ways to do cameras. It's a very common thing. Uh, so there's there are some really nice plugins to make a camera follow a character. So this tutorial, or this, this playlist of tutorials, is actually about Bolt. So I'm going to do this in Bolt real quick because maybe some of what we do here will apply elsewhere in a game. Like maybe you want your NPCs to follow your main character. And that would be the same as what we're getting ready to do here. And at the end of this playlist, I will tack on some extra videos. One of those being a very nice plugin that's set up for a camera follower with just a couple clicks. Everything is already created for us. But for us, this tutorial is about Bolt. So let's set up our camera to follow our character. So a quick review on what we did uh, to do it the second time. We need a macro, which is what we call our graphs, the which replace scripts. And anything that we could have done in a C-sharp script, we can also do in Bolt. So if you see other tutorials that go through steps in C-sharp, uh, whatever keywords that you're using in that tutorial in the C sharp script, you can just type those keywords in the fuzzy finder in Bolt and find a unit that does the same thing and connect all the pieces together. So we need a graph for our camera. So I'm going to right click over here in the project panel, the assets folder, macros folder. I'm going to right click and create a new Bolt flow macro that tells us how the camera moves from frame to frame of the game. And I'll call this camera control or any name. You can names or whatever you want to call them. But you want to be it's good to be descriptive. That way you can tell what it is, right? If we called this one C and this one P, they would still act the same, but it's kind of hard to tell at a glance what each one does. We'd have to go in and look. So a good descriptive name is useful. And now we need to link this macro or visual script to our camera. So we select the camera in the hierarchy. And over in the inspector, we have a transform, some stuff about a camera, an audio listener. So nothing about the, the graphs yet. So we need to add a new component to our object. And I searched for it last time, so nothing's changed here. It's still searching for what we actually need, a flow machine. So we want to add in a flow machine. It's going to be a macro. And which macro is it? What's well, this new one we just created? So we click and drag that over to this spot right here, which you can see is the only spot it will let me drop a macro as I move that mouse around, get that not allowed icon until right there. And now this new macro is connected to our camera. And the two things we, two events we always have to worry about because we want to make sure there's a, every do, we want to make sure include a start event and an update event. And hopefully this will find it before too long. There it is. So a start event and add unit. We also want an update event. We want to make sure and include those every time. When we're typing scripts, start and update come pre-typed in there. 
I always think it'd be nice if those came pre-installed in the graphs because we know we want those every time. Now, just like we did when we made the player move, we're going to adjust the transform. But we're going to set it a little bit different. Uh, we just grabbed the position and adjusted the position. So I'm going to do it a slightly different way here. I'm going to right click, bring up the fuzzy finder. And again, I'm going to look for transform. But this time, instead of looking at all the transforms, So I'm going to search for transform set local position. See if it finds anything off all of them. Yep. Much more refined search. So a local position is an exact movement. The last time we used translate, so that means move this much from where we're current, currently at. This time we're just going to set the local position overall. And we have a couple nodes to plug in for the inputs. Well, this first one's the flow, and we want the camera to follow our character, which is moving it, which might be moving it every frame of the game, so we don't want it on the start, which only runs once, so we can connect it with the update. That way it rechecks every time. It's going to refer to itself, and now we need the things that we're going to look at. Or now we need the units that tell it how to move. So when we moved our player, we put it two key presses. The, we're going to press the one of the key control keys and the player is going to move in that direction. Well, we don't have to do that for the camera because the camera can just follow their character along. So we need a way to refer to the character. If we right click and add unit, one of our options is a game object. If we search for game object, that refers to all of the objects we put in the game. However, there are a few drawbacks to this. These are very refined, so I would recommend not using it this way. And instead, we can simply make a reference to our player with a variable. Because that's what a, a variable is. It's just a reference to that data. So if we come over to the scene tab and create a new variable, and I'm going to call it just call it player, the same thing I called it in the room. So this one called player is referring to the scene we're looking at. And this one called player is refer is for our graph, but they refer to the same thing. So what type of data is being stored in that variable? We're going to store a game object. And then what game object are we going to store? Right now it says none. But just like we did when we set up linked it to the macro if we just come up here to the hierarchy select player whoops something changed set that back to game object and then drag the player down there so just clicked on it and dragged it into that spot so now we have a reference that always refers to that player object and we're going to follow it so we can just drag that variable over here and now that refers to our player, but we only need something about the player. We don't need the player object itself. We just want to know that player's position. So if we look for transform, and in particular, we want the get local position. So transform, get local position. Just kind of search for that. I accidentally hit enter. That's why it popped up so quick. But that tells us the position of whatever this variable references, which is the player, which will be moving around with the keyboard. And then from that, we can pull things out of. So we need a vector two. So we're going to vectors. Uh, special types of numbers, if you haven't seen them in math class, has two parts of a number. It has the magnitude, the size of it, and the direction in which it point, points. So we'll have either three, two, or three dimensions for that vector. 
we're doing everything in 2D, so we just need a 2D vector. And we'll get the X component. And same thing with the Y. So we can drag another one out here. Search for vector 2 again. Get a vector 2, and we want to get the Y component. And then we'll use both of those. Notice here in our set local position of the transform, one, two, three. It's expecting a 3D vector, but we only composed a 2D vector because our camera is a, has a different Z at, Z value. That's how it's. That's why it's not at the same level as our character. We can actually see the character. So we have two two axes of our vector. So we can add in a unit to create a vector three. One of our options here should be to create one. I don't see it on the list. It's kind of a long list, so I'm going to add create into that search. Vector 3, create. Let's see if it finds this. There it is. Create a vector 3 from X, Y, and Z components. So our X, we have the X component and the Y component, and our Z, well, we want our camera always to be at negative 10. That way it's not on the same plane as our character. It's towards us from the character. So we can just bring that out and put in a literal and actually type in negative 10 because we always want it to be negative 10. So that puts the coordinates together for what, how we want to move our camera. It's going to go to the same, we're going to get the X and Y coordinates from our character and then feed those into a new vector 3 and just tell our camera to go to that vector 3. And again, at the end of this video, I'm going to put together, uh, at the end of this playlist, I'll put some extra videos on. One of them will be a better way to do this, but maybe some of this applies to something else you'll need in your, whatever your game is going to do. So let's run this and see if it works. So now when it's running, if I move the character to the left, oh, we can see the camera follows him. Move him to the right, down, up. The camera's following in every direction. So that got our camera following him. So there's the next problem. We should probably stop when we hit that wall. So we'll address that in the next video, but that gets the camera following it. And again, I will show an easier way of that, but maybe the way we set this camera up to follow that, you'll need some of that for something else. Maybe you want the NPCs to follow the character. And you can do that in both. I just wanted to go ahead and include this, even though we'll see a better way to do a camera tacked on as an extra video at the end of this playlist.